Hey, buckaroos and buckarettes, it's good to be back with you. Today I got a real simple problem for us. We're going to figure out how to calculate the tension in a cable that's holding up a beam like this, or a bar, rigid bar. So we're going to use the recipe for solving statics problems. And if you're not familiar with the recipe, you can go back and look at one of my other videos. I have a video on that. But the recipe has four steps in it, and we're going to execute all four of those steps. The first is we're going to need a working diagram. That's this. Then we're going to draw a free body diagram. Then we're going to draw or write out equations of static equilibrium. And then we're going to solve for something. And that's something we're going to solve for is the tension. And the fifth step, of course, is optional. We're going to enjoy baked goods afterwards in celebration. So let's go ahead and do this. It's a real simple process here. So we already got the first step done. Let's draw the second step now. That's the free body diagram. And the idea of a free body diagram, the operative word there is free. I'm going to cut part of my structure free of everything it's connected to. And I'm going to draw only that part of the structure. Now, is the rest of the stuff still there? Sure it is. So when we draw the free body diagram, the way the rest of that stuff communicates its existence to the part that I've drawn is through forces. So we, uh, there'll be a force from tension here, and there'll be a force from this support, and we're going to call that a reaction force. Now, let's before we go too far, let's talk about what that little sort of triangle thing with this little sort of, I don't know, comb-looking thing next to it is. This is a, a notional way of drawing a pinned joint. Now, I have a pin here. Oh, hang on. This is a pinned joint. I actually made one. Okay, see that little sort of clevis looking thing or fork, I guess? And there's this little bar that goes in there. Put them together, line them up so that hole lines up. Got my pin here. There. That's a pinned joint, so it can rotate. But that pin right there, right there, the, the pin's actually in shear, the pin can resist horizontal loads and it can resist vertical loads. So if this part down here is fixed, let's say this part over here is that. Okay? This isn't going to move. And what that comb-looking thing there means is that uh, whatever's on this side of it is rigid and massive. We don't know what's over there. Block of concrete, a building, a bridge abutment, who knows? But whatever it is, it's rigid and massive. It isn't going to move no matter what we do. So this is just an easy way to draw that. Let's say this part here is that. Does it look like this? No. Does it act like this? Yes, and that's what we care about. So assume this is pinned, okay, and this is, this is fixed. Here's my pin joint. So this bar can move this way if it wants to. I can pull this way on the pin, and it won't move, and I can push that way on the pin, and it won't move that way either. Okay? So a pin like this can resist both horizontal and vertical forces, and we're going to show that in the free body diagram. So let's draw the free body diagram. Now, it's going to be a lot simpler. The free body diagram is very spare. It's almost skeletal in its simplicity. So first thing I'm going to need here is a, is a positive sign convention. Okay, there's a positive sign convention right there. Now, that is, doesn't say what the origin is. It just says what are the positive directions for forces and moments. Okay? And remember, Physics doesn't know or care anything about our, our coordinate system or our sign convention. Physics just works. The sign convention and the uh, uh, origin of the coordinate system, those are all there for us, for us to be able to do our analysis, for kind of for the bookkeeping. So we can make this anything we want. Well, if you don't know what else to do, do that. So let's see. I'm going to have the, there's going to be an x component of tension, and there's going to be a y component of tension. Now, I don't know what either one of those are. We'll figure that out here in a minute. But it's enough to say that, that we're going to break that tension into its horizontal and vertical components according to our positive sign convention. All right, well, what I have drew here is an uh, engineering technology professor in what I think we can agree is late middle age. And he weighs 950 newtons, at least he did this morning. Um, so I'm going to draw weight there. And notice I'm not putting numbers here. Numbers make this messy. I'm just going to leave it in, in variables for right now. We'll, we'll get to the numbers later. Now, this is the, the, the force that that pinned, the, that boundary, it's called, exerts on the bar is called a reaction force. 
And so what I'll do is I'll call this R sub X for reaction force in the X direction and R sub Y for reaction force in the Y direction. So there's our free body diagram. So remember what the four steps are? Working diagram, free body diagram. Next is going to be equations of static equilibrium, and then we're going to solve for something. So um, I have to apologize. I don't know if you can hear that noise out there. About, oh, I don't know, 50 feet, 16 meters from my window, there's an entire building being, being put up right now. And so I'm listening to bulldozers and backhoes and stuff. Sorry, I can't turn off the background noise. So let's draw, or let's write out the equations of static equilibrium. Well, there's only three. We're working in the plane of the board here in two dimensions. So there's, I can sum forces in the x direction, I can sum forces in the y direction, and I can sum moments about one point. Right? Well, let's see, summing forces in the x direction, that has to equal zero. Summing forces in the y direction, hang on a second here, I can do better, there we go also has to equal zero, and I can sum the moments about some point, and that has to equal zero. So there's my three equations in the most compact possible form. Well, I've done about a billion of these things, it seems, and so I know from experience which one of these I really need, and it's really that one. Because here's the thing. The problem says find T. It doesn't say find the reaction force doesn't matter. I mean, they're there. They're they're a number. You can calculate them if you want to, and it'll be right if you execute the process correctly. But the problem doesn't ask for it, so I don't care. Having done this about a zillion times, I know that if I go straight to this equation right here, I can find only the things I want to. Now, if you want to go through these and and work them out for yourself, good deal. You go do that. It's fine. But for brevity, I'm gonna I'm gonna just start right there. So remember what a force or a moment is. It's a force acting at a perpendicular distance. Well, let's see. Perpendicular distance from that, that uh, vertical uh, component of tension, that's four meters, that's three meters. OK, so I know what the distances are. Let's do this. I have to pick a point about which to calculate moments. Physics does not care what point I pick. I could pick one down here if I want to, and it'll work fine. That's a lot of work. You know, I'm not looking for more work at this point in my life. So I've learned from experience that you may not have yet, and if you don't, that's okay. But I've learned that if I pick that point right there, all right, and maybe I'll call that point R. I need to call it something. I'll call it point R. If I pick that point, Let's see, the perpendicular distance from this force, which is a force, to that point is zero. Perpendicular distance of that force to that point is zero. And here's the best part. The perpendicular distance from this hor the horizontal component of tension to that point is also zero because if you can extend this, and you can extend forces as far as you want along their line of action to figure out what your perpendicular distance is, also goes through zero or goes through this, the, 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 the uh, distance is zero. So the only thing I got left are W and TY. I'll bet if I know what TY is, I can figure out T. If I know one of the components and I know the angle, I do, I can figure out T. It's not going to be hard. So I'm going to write this equation out here. So I'm going to sum the moments about point R. And that, uh, that circle there just means it's a point. OK, so let's see. Force times distance. Force is W. And here, let's, let's do the distance first. It's 3 meters times W. Now, I've got to decide whether this moment is positive or negative. And this is important. If you're going to mess up, this is probably where you're going to do it. That point right there, well, that, the weight, is trying to rotate the beam clockwise. Okay? Trying to rotate the beam clockwise. My sign convention says counterclockwise is positive. So if this is trying to rotate the beam clockwise, that must be a negative moment. All right? So there's that one. Now let's, let's see. The next one is TY acting at a distance of 4 meters. 
And let's see, I can, again, I can do better. Okay, now, is that positive or negative? Well, if I put my finger there, this TY is trying to rotate the beam counterclockwise. Well, that's positive. And that has to equal zero. So what I got is one equation, and there's the only thing I don't know. One equation, one unknown, it doesn't get easier than that. So if I solve this, let's do it in two steps here. Four meters times Ty is going to give you three meters times W. And remember, we know W. That's 950 newtons. That's given. So Ty is going to be three meters over four meters times W, and the meters cancel out. That's going to have uh, units of force, newtons, and so is that. So we're good there, too. So there's the equation we got to solve. The only thing, only problem we got here is that uh, I don't need to know the vertical component of T. I need T. Let me erase this real quick. I have a tiny little board in my office here. So I got I got to reuse space here. So let's draw a force triangle, and that was 40 degrees. All right. Double check. Yes. Okay. There's T. There's Ty. There's Tx, and that's perpendicular. See where I'm headed here? Ty over T equals sine of 40 degrees. All right. That means Ty is T sine 40 degrees. Well, what if everywhere I see Ty, I'll put that. That ought to work, shouldn't it? Now, I need to, I need to reuse some more space here. I'm going to go ahead and erase this stuff that I don't need anymore. Uh, see that. You guys see this down here? Ah, you kind of can. All right, so um, T sine 40 degrees, which is Ty, equals 3 over 4 W. Man, this is so easy a professor can do it. So you know what this has got to be like. So let's just bring this on home here. Okay, that's going to be 3W over 4 sine 40 degrees, and remember that's 950 newtons, and when you work that out, you get 1110.69 newtons. And there you go. So step three in the recipe was to write out the equations of equilibrium, which we did. Step four, solve for something. Step five, which is optional, is to go enjoy baked goods, which I'm about to do right now. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.